Hello and welcome students. We will learn about Asia resources in this module. Now the, among the resources there is a long list. So first we will deal with the forest resources. There are different types of forest in Asia like coniferous. Forest mostly found in the taiga region as we have learnt in the earlier modules. Monsoon forest growing in the monsoon region and equatorial forest growing in the equatorial region. So the timber that is wood which we get from the coniferous forest they are soft wood. So mostly used to make paper and pulp. The timber that we get from monsoon forest are valuable because they are uh, very durable hardwood and can we can make furniture as well as paper. The equatorial forest of hardwood trees like ebony, mahogany and rosewood, they are also commercially very valuable and they are very expensive and they are in high demand. They are used extensively for making several items. Now the minerals that is found in Asia, important ones are iron ore, mainly mined in countries like China, India and Siberia and tin in China, Indonesia, Myanmar, Vietnam, Malaysia. Apart from iron ore and tin, other minerals that are mined in different countries of Asia are mica, manganese, bauxite, uranium, nickel, gold, lead, zinc and copper. So these are the mine minerals mined in different parts or countries of Asia. Apart from minerals, there are also fossil fuels. In the category of fossil fuels come mineral fuel like coal, petroleum and natural gas. So they are here. Coal. Coal is mainly found in China, India, Indonesia, Siberia and Kazakhstan. Petroleum in Asia is found in Saudi Arabia, Siberia, China, Indonesia and Kazakhstan. Now children, petroleum and natural gas are mostly found together. So you will find that almost similar countries are there. So natural gas is found in Siberia, the Gulf countries, Indonesia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Malaysia. So these are the countries where natural gas is found. Let's proceed. Now we'll see in the resources that is land is a resource and we can do agriculture on the land and when we grow crops then it is very valuable. So 15% of land is fertile in Asia and where is the fertile land? Fertile land is mostly in the river valleys or river basins and in the coastal plains. These areas are very fertile because here the sediments are brought and uh, the land is made fertile. Even the steppy grassland of uh, Asia is good for and suitable for agriculture. In Japan, in countries in Asia like Japan, Singapore and Kuwait, very few people are involved in agriculture. Whereas countries like India, China and most of the Southeast Asian countries, they are engaged in agriculture. So it depends on the development and the occupation means how and where people are engaged in. Now if we see the types of agriculture practiced in Asia, they are intensive subsistence agriculture. This is the first type of agriculture. Apart from this, there is extensive uh, 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 sorry, commercial agriculture and also plantation and shifting agriculture. So we will see and learn about them one by one. So the intensive subsistence agriculture is pra practiced mostly in countries like China, South and Southeast Asia. In this type of agriculture, farmers generally grow crops on small plots of land and the plots are small and big machines therefore cannot be used. So most of the work is done by manual labor means basically the farmer and his family members work in the field to grow crops. Now the practices they do is crop rotation and mix cropping. In crop rotation what happens if the farmer has grown wheat now then the next season he will grow rice and then maybe next season he grows maize. So like this he will keep rotating the crops he will not grow only one crop in every season. So this is called crop rotation. What is mixed cropping? In a farm at the same time where two or more than two crops are grown together then we call it mixed farming. Even in mixed farming animals are also kept in the farm so that the far farmer can earn little more income. For example uh, maybe 
birds are kept or cattle are kept so that milk can be uh, fetched from them and can be sold into the market to get little extra income now children this is the, uh, this is a picture see the farms are very small and in between the farm the passage is left is very narrow so that maximum land can be taken and can be used for growing crops the next type of farming is extensive commercial agriculture this is practiced in grasslands of siberia and parts of central asia farms are very large so do you remember in intensive farming the farms are very small in extensive commercial farms are large highly mechanized so big farms that machines can be easily used and less people work in the field why this type of agriculture has developed because population is less and the production is high because farms are very large so production is also very high so these are the other points related to the extensive commercial farming large areas under cultivation monoculture means a single crop is grown for example wheat wheat is grown in every season now low population density has encouraged the, this type of agriculture in this region now if we see the difference between both intensive subsistence farming crops are produced by farmer mainly for his family and if extra crops are left they will sell it into the local market for example wheat and rice in commercial farming crops are grown for profit for commercial purpose in subsistence farming it is labor intensive mainly the manual laborers are involved in commercial farming it is machine intensive it is mechanized means machines are involved in intensive subsistence the farming more than one crop is grown but here in commercial farming usually one crop is grown now next type of agriculture is plantation agriculture children plantation means the crops are grown for profit and they are mostly brought from outside so it is practiced mostly in malaysia indonesia sri lanka china and india in plantation agriculture the crops are grown are not natural to the region they have been brought from some other place they are commercially valuable example tea coffee cocoa palm rubber coconut etc these can be plantation crops now children you can see a coffee plantation this is a huge farm where only coffee is being cultivated tea plantation and banana plantation so these are the plantation crops now the next type of agriculture is very interesting but is highly unscientific it is it should not be practiced because it is very hazardous for the uh, nature so the shifting agriculture is also known as it uh, the method it include is slash and burn i'll tell you what it is and you know it is also known as zooming cultivation in this a part of forest is cleared by cutting the trees all right and then when the resources are over people leave that land and move further i'll show you the picture see slash and burn so forest is slashed means cut down and then burned and the, this land is used for living and when this land is the resources are over this land is abandoned is left like that and people move to another area this picture will make it clear slash was done slashing of the trees burning of the trees people li li lived for many years maybe for 3 to 4 years they used all the resources but when the resources got over they moved to clearing too again they slashed the trees and burnt and lived for 3 4 years and then moved to the third location so like this they keep on shifting so this is called shifting or zooming cultivation zooming cultivation is uh, a word used in north eastern part of india and the method they use is slash and burn so i hope this type of agriculture is clear now children we'll move further with uh, the resources and we'll see which crops are mainly grown in asia so children the main food crops are rice wheat millets and pulses and the cash crops that generate cash coconut sorry jute cotton jute sugarcane tea coffee rubber and oil seeds rice is a staple crop means generally people consume they eat rice and rice grows mostly in china india and southeast asia do you know what china india bangladesh and indonesia 
they four form the world's leading rice producing countries so rice is really a very very important crop in asia followed by the, the rice next crop is wheat it is produced mainly in china india pakistan and turkey apart from wheat millet jowar bajra ragi pulses and cotton are also produced in different countries of asia so children apart from the major crops like rice wheat millets and all other crops also grow and we consider most of them cash crops they are jute sugarcane tea coffee rubber and fruits so they are also grown at uh, different types of uh, prof, uh, like profit making business is done by like uh, jute uh, tea tea is mainly produced in china and india coffee mainly in vietnam indonesia and india so like this different crops grow in different parts of and different countries of asia now children after agriculture we come to animal rearing in animal rearing what farmers do farmers maintain cattle goat poultry and pigs to supplement their farm income means apart from growing crops they also keep animals in their farm so that they can earn extra income india and china are the leading milk producing countries in asia sheep and goat are reared in mountainous areas so yes mountainous areas there is lot of green grass and the sheep and goat can uh, feed themselves better you know what is very interesting that horses and camel are reared in the arid means dry and semi dry areas of central asia and these horses are exported all over the world from here so the arid regions of asia support horses and camels and the horses are exported they are in huge demand all over the world you know children about the angura goat it's reared in turkey angura goats are very famous for their fur called mohair and apart from animal rearing mo aquaculture that is rearing of fish that is also practiced in parts of asia aquaculture is rearing of fish and selfish and also include growing of edible plants so all this is practiced under aqua culture children there is a picture of angura goat you can see the fur it's so fluffy and long fur so this is very this is known as mohair and it is very very famous this is a picture showing aqua culture see the fish rearing is being done and there is a lot of fish and it can fetch a lot of profit now next in the category of resources comes industries so which are the industri most industrialized countries of of asia they are japan china india south korea taiwan singapore and malaysia and they produce wide range of goods like agro based product textile steel electrical and electronic goods automobile etc apart from this oil refining is major industry in southwest india and mining is and forestry is practiced in siberia so northern most part of uh, asia is cold also and mostly frozen so mainly uh, coniferous forest their mine uh, forestry is done and minerals are uh, mined from there the major fishing grounds so fishing industry is also flourishing in asia in the pacific ocean china is a leading fishing nation of the world so uh, in the south china sea that is a part of pacific ocean china does a lot of fishing and that's why it's a leading fishing nation in the world fishing include inland fishing that is inside the continent when fishing is done from river river lake pond etc and coastal fishing is when a fishing is done from the ocean and seas now children apart from industries like fishing industry and all there is also an industry called tourism industry so tourism industry is very flourishing in countries like china hong kong turkey malaysia india and israel so these are the developed tourist uh, nations or they have very famous tourist destination from tourist all over the world now we move to transport of asia in this what is the condition of transport answer is the harsh climate in the northern part of asia 
and the difficult terrains means the land is uneven mountains plateaus it doesn't allow you to make roads railway etc has encouraged people to find out other ways of developing developing transport network so they have developed different types of transport modes that is roadway railway airways and waterway so the places where we cannot made make road or rail we construct airways and the places where it is not possible to carry very huge bulky goods then we rely on waterways mostly roadways and railways are made on plain areas which are gently sloping let's start with the first mode that is called roadways densely populated plains of southern and eastern asia have well developed roads i told you the plains have a facility for construction of roads and rails because they have gentle slope plains have gentle slope and make easier to construct road world's highest road are located in central asian mountain the next is railway india and china have the largest railway network in asia high speed trains run in japan china and korea and you know what the trans siberian railroad you must have heard about it is the longest railway in the world and you know it uh, crosses from the heart of very cold areas see it is connecting this corner of asia to europe so you can imagine the length of the trans siberian rail route its longest railway network in the world now children we come to waterways let us see where is water transport famous inland water transport is important in south and southeast asia inland water transport means when the water bodies inside the continent or a country is used for traveling so we say inland water transport river iravadi river mekong river ganga river brahmaputra and river yantzi are busiest waterways in asia now the rivers in northern asia remain frozen we have learnt about this and so they are not fit for navigation navigation means fit for transportation if a river is navigable it is fit for transportation now we proceed in waterways further we have an important water body called suez canal this is a man made canal and the pacific routes the routes uh, passing through pacific ocean are important international trade routes so these uh, international trade route means they connect one nation to another pacific route connect ports of east asia to those of north and south america suez canal route connect asia and europe few busiest ports are shanghai singapore mumbai and there are many more so children you can see this is the suez canal it is connecting from here that is from the part of indian ocean to the mediterranean sea so like this is connecting to ocean connecting to continent now the airways where uh, the land transport is not fit suitable then we rely on air transport air transport is very important in asia because there is vast size of the continent and the terrain is of the continent which is very difficult especially in the central portion it is mountainous remote north and central asian mountainous region are mostly connected only with airways can you imagine there are no roads and railways in many areas they are so undulating so the terrain is so uneven that they totally depend on railways major airports are beijing dubai tokyo delhi bokaro sorry bangkok bangkok jakarta etc and now the last topic of this chapter that is major cities so asia has the most populous cities in the world some are tokyo delhi shanghai mumbai osaka beijing istanbul dhaka karachi manila and hong kong see students there are many more but i have listed few you will find the rest in your book so thank you that's all for this chapter